Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films, and I'm your host, Coach Evans, and this is Ravens Daily for February 16th, 2024. A special shout out to all the Sip the Tally Patreons. You guys are the backbone of the channel, and if you're not a Patreon, head on over to patreon.com backslash sip the tally to sign up. Before we get into today's content, 30% of you guys that watch the channel are not subscribed. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Help me reach the short-term goal of 10,000 subscribers. Now let's get started with today's content. The Ravens rookie class ranked in the lower half in the NFL. The NFL draft is in April, and the Ravens general manager, Erie DaCosta, and the Baltimore scouting staff are hard at work evaluating college talent that could potentially help the team take the extra step next year. CBS Sports ranked last year's draft classes, and while the Ravens weren't at the top, they weren't at the bottom either. They were ranked 17th, with Zay Flowers being considered a year one hit. Flowers was an immediate contributor to a revamped Baltimore passing attack that included a couple of free agents bought in to appease newly re-signed quarterback Lamar Jackson. The Ravens' third-round pick, linebacker Trent Simpson, didn't put up a ton of numbers because he was playing behind all pros Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, with the latter expected to hit free agency. Is there a chance that Baltimore will give Simpson more opportunities in his second year? I hope so. In the fourth round, Baltimore selected edge rusher Tavius Robinson, who recorded one single sack in 2023 despite being buried on the depth chart. His development will be a big storyline this count because the Ravens have several veteran free agents at his position who may not return, Calvin Noy, Clowney, among others. Sixth round pick, Moose Masala. <laughs> we just going to call him Sala because I always struggle with his name. And seventh round pick guard, Andrew Voorhees, didn't see a lot of playing time due to being buried on the depth chart, and we know Voorhees was injured at the combine last year and still threw up 39 on the bench press, basically on one leg. Odell Beckham probably won't return next season. If the Ravens decide to let Beckham Jr. leave the offseason, they'll need to have a plan in place to replace him in the passing game. Luckily for Baltimore, they have some options for a replacement. The easiest would probably be for them to grab a receiver early in the draft. The Ravens have spent a first rounder on a receiver in three of the past five drafts. Luckily, this year's draft class is deep at receiver, so the team can look elsewhere in round one and still get a solid starter at receiver in the second round. They could also look to free agency. The options are less abundant there, but there are some players that could fit. DJ Chark posted numbers similar to Beckham Jr. in 2023, despite playing for a bad Panthers offense. He could cost a third of what Beckham Jr. did this past season. Josh Reynolds also passed, posted similar numbers and will be a lot cheaper option for the team. The other option for the Ravens is to get the production at another position. Isaiah likely made the case for the team using two tight ends, more often with a strong performance while Mark, Mark Andrews was injured. The team could also look to add a talented receiving back. The idea of trading for Alvin Kamara was recently proposed. He made 75 catches for the Saints this past season and could certainly be a third pass catching option for the Ravens. With so many options out there, it looks like a good idea for the Ravens to move on from Odell Beckham Jr. Before we continue, if you enjoy this content, hit that like button. And if you're really feeling it, share it on your socials. I really, really, really appreciate that. Our third topic, can the defense handle all the departures? For the Baltimore Ravens, their success on defense after they allowed, allowed the fewest points per game, 16.5, led the league in sacks, 60, and tied for first in turnovers with 31, accumulated in members of their coaching staff landing prominent roles elsewhere. Former defensive coordinator Mike McDonald was hired as the Seattle Seahawks head coach. Former defensive backs coach Denard Wilson landed at Tennessee Titans defensive coordinator job. And former defensive line coach Anthony Weaver landed the same job with the Miami Dolphins. With these coaches gone, Baltimore's focus is likely set to make sure it doesn't experience the same turnover with the defensive players who are set to hit free agency. ESPN listed one burning question for each team this offseason. And for the Ravens, it was, how much more change will the Ravens undergo, will the Ravens' defense undergo? Keeping all their key contributors on defense will prove difficult for the Ravens as they are projected to have 6 to $8 million in cap space. Inevitably, they'll have to restructure contracts, cut players to make room for potentially re-signing defensive tackle Justin Matabike and or linebacker Patrick Queen. Matabike and Queen couldn't have picked a better time to have the best seasons of their NFL career 
as they each are in the final year of their rookie contracts. Matabike set a career high and led the Ravens in sacks with 13, tackles for loss 12, quarterback hits 33, and pressures with 33. Queen had a career best 133 tackles, plus 9 for loss, 3.5 sacks, and 6 passes defended with 1 interception. And our last topic for today is something that shocked me, but it shouldn't have. We all know Lamar Jackson does a lot for the kids in his community. I didn't know he had written a book. It shouldn't surprise me that he's done something of this magnitude because he'll do anything for the kids. At his Lamar Jackson community days or whatever he calls them, he goes out and plays with the kids. He's uh, had pundits take shots, at him, sh take shots at him because he actually goes out there and plays with the kids and does you know one-on-one -on -one drills and does stuff on them, you know, on the the asphalt and whatnot. So Lamar's kid friendly. He does. He goes above and beyond to do stuff for the kids. So when I saw the fact that he wrote this book, it really, you know, took me aback to, to see that. So, you know, the NFL's 2024 MVP, Lamar Jackson, is known for making big plays on the field. But the Baltimore Ravens quarterback is also touching down a hopeful message with Dreaming Big. Uh, it's an inspirational children's book, I Dream, You Dream, Let Us Dream. Drawing from his own experiences, he encourages children to set their sights on a goal and pursue their dreams relentlessly, regardless of their obstacles that they may face and current circumstances. Dreams are great, big or small, no matter the size. You can have them all. Do not limit your dreams to what others say you can do. Believe in yourself and hold true to your dreams, writes Jackson in his book. With an inspiring tone and engaging narrative, he invites young readers to embark on a journey of self-discovery, empowerment, manifestation, Jackson's heartfelt story was published by British Columbia-based indie publisher Tedwell Publishing in 2022. Timothy Lesse, founder and CEO of Tedwell Publishing, expresses an admiration for the book's powerful message and the inspiring author behind it. I can't think of anyone better to encourage children to dream big, go after their goals, and believe in themselves than Lamar Jackson, he said. His personal story of dreaming and being a professional football player when he was young shows kids that, dream, that big dreams do come true and that anything is possible with the right mindset and work ethic. Through heartfelt prose and vibrant illustrations, Jackson book, Jackson's book teaches young readers to follow their passion and chart their own path to success. Follow your heart from right from the start, hold true to your dreams, and even when it seems hard, there's so much more that you can do. Keep dreaming, and it'll come to you. Lindsay says Tedwell is proud to have played a role in Jackson's literary journey. We are rooting for him on and off the field, and hope this book will be one of many to inspire children anywhere, everywhere, I'm sorry. And that's Ravens Daily for February 16th, 2024. If you liked the video, smash the like button. Let's see if we can get to 200 likes. And if you're new, tap the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss the off-season content for the rest of the off-season. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me, and I appreciate it. See you next time. Peace and love.